Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Foreign Minister Badawal Bhutto, Ministers and Ladies and Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and your commitment shown to the people of Pakistan and your presence here in our pavilion is a manifestation of your great support and your concern for the people of Pakistan. Your visit to Pakistan will be remembered for all times to come. And your statements, your support and your message of sympathy was heartwarming. And today again, it is a great commitment shown by you despite your very busy schedule. And now today we are here. And you know better than me that we are poised on the threshold of a new green deal or a trajectory to a three degree world where returning to the earth we know today will be impossible. You also know that some countries, namely Pakistan, will be more exposed, more deeply vulnerable than others living in cooler longitudes. For the lost and the damaged of the world, such gatherings are the only hope. In my country, said General, millions of people are going into winter without the shelter or livelihood. That is their fundamental right. Women and children are still looking to us to protect their basic needs, while entire villages are seeking to secure a precarious future with all of us such recovery hinging on a flow of resources that we are unable to guarantee. Huge lakes of stagnant water have transformed the landscape of the south where crops would have fed millions and livestock would have saved families from destitution. We are picking up the pieces as we speak. But hundreds of bridges still lie broken like the 8,000 plus kilometers of metal road ripped out like toothpick from the fury of the raging torrents. And you said, and very rightly so, monsoon on steroids. The health crisis that threatened the south with its waterborne diseases from new lakes that don't drain and the water is still stagnating all over. We are grateful to the UN agencies, WHO and other development partners in supporting us through this unprecedented challenge. But this climate carnage is so much more than an exogenous shock to the entire body of our social and economic fabric. The latest estimates have calculated loss and damage at $30 billion. Our journey to recovery will be held back by increasing public debt, rising international energy prices, and no real access to adaptation funds. Our social security platform, the Benazir Income Support Program, has allocated urgent cash transfers worth US dollar 316 million to the most vulnerable 2.8 million families, providing US dollar 113 to each affected family. We have mobilized every available resource towards the national relief effort and repurposed all budget priorities, including resilience and development funds to the rescue and first order needs of millions. But the gap is 
much bigger and it must be filled sooner rather than later and we truly appreciate the flash appeals and the efforts you and your team have made but as you know sec general there is still a long way to go in sheltering and feeding millions of people at the broader level we seek to add loss and damage to the climate agenda and we hope that all countries come to the cop 27 meetings in the spirit you so ably championed as climate justice for all my goal in the end is the same as yours excellency to not let helplessness become a death sentence in this race against time let us plan on working towards that ambition because what goes on in pakistan will not stay in pakistan so let's uh, stand up and say no to this before it's too late thank you sir general thank you very much There are moments in our life that are unforgettable and that mark you deeply. My last visit to Pakistan was one of these moments. To see an area flooded that is three times the size of my country Portugal. To see the loss of life, the loss of crops, the loss of livelihoods. To see the dramatic impact in the lives of people all over the country and at the same time to see the courage the resilience and the generosity of the pakistani people i knew that generosity when i was high commissioner for refugees looking at the way pakistanis have shared everything to receive millions and millions of afghan refugees but this time i could witness that generosity with a testimony that i will never forget a women and men that have decided to leave their property to leave their assets to go and rescue other people other people's lives in the neighborhood instead of protecting their own assets their own property now these examples of generosity are examples that should be imitated by the international community the international community has a duty to massively support pakistan in this moment and there are different ways to do it when the un is proud to be associated with the government of pakistan for the international donor conference in which uh, uh, we will try to uh, to obtain from the international community to the government of pakistan the kind of massive support that is needed for the rehabilitation the reconstruction of the areas impacted by these tragic events but more needs to be done the prime minister has said if there is any doubt about loss and damage go to pakistan there is loss and there is damage and this cop needs to recognize it and needs to define a road map a clear road map to deal with it and including the creation of an institutional framework including financing in order to address the problems of loss and damage and i hope that pakistan will be able to benefit from these developments but then pakistan is also a victim of being a middle income country and because it is a middle income country pakistan has not benefited from debt relief at the level that should be necessary for the country and one of the proposals that i've been making is for countries like pakistan there should be a way to have a swap exchanging the payment of the debt to investments in the rehabilitation and the recovery and reconstruction 
from a natural disaster like the one that has occurred. So my appeal to the international financial institutions and to the G20 that will be meeting soon in Bali is to create the conditions for mechanisms of debt relief of middle income countries impacted by natural disasters the size of the one Pakistan had in order to allow resources to be devoted to the investments in resilience and in recovery and the reconstruction that are necessary. And then it is again Pakistan is victim from the fact that being a middle income country Pakistan has no access to concessional funding. There is no reason why middle income countries that are dramatically impacted by climate change have no reason for them not to have access to concessional funding. And I believe that in the context of the Bretton Woods system, this is something that needs to be reviewed. And I hope the G20 will also be able, in this regard, to promote the necessary reforms. Because it depends on decisions of the boards, and those countries that will gather in G20 have the majority of the boards of uh, the IMF and the World Bank, and also in relation to many other regional uh, international development banks and other financial institutions. So, let's be clear. Pakistan deserves massive support directly from the international community. Pakistan deserves loss and damage to be considered as a reality and to be followed that recognition by uh, the uh, financial mechanisms that I hope this conference will be able to decide. And uh, finally, it is important to review the way the international financial system works in order for Pakistan to have access to effective debt relief and to have access to the concessional funding that is necessary for the levels of reconstruction and rehabilitation that are huge, taking into account the devastating impact of the floods. And the UN will be side by side with Pakistan. And I want to once again express our total solidarity with the people, the government of Pakistan, and a strong appeal for the international community to be able to correspond to the generosity that Pakistanis have always shown. Thank you very much.